come. Okay, so let us uh, start with the first talk and uh, I'll be talking now on cataract surgery in patients with diabetic macular edema. Well, I have no financial interests or disclosures to make in relation to uh, this presentation. Uh, here, cataract, we all know, is an important uh, cause of visual impairment in diabetics. And as we all know that the incidence of cataract surgery in diabetics is two to five times higher than a comparable non-diabetic population. And we have uh, to discuss during this eight minutes are the guidelines. We will see there are many guidelines we'll, and we'll talk about what the guidelines have to say. Then we will talk about the progression of DME after cataract surgery, management of DME after cataract surgery, and effect of cataract surgery on DME. So these are the few topics we're going to talk. Well, as for the guidelines, as you can see that there are many guidelines, both international and national guidelines are available. And uh, you know these, all these guidelines kind of uh, want to uh, take care of the local needs and local problems. But principally, these guidelines tell us the same, the same principles of management. So let us look at the principles of management. For mild cataract, careful assessment of the diabetic retinopathy status should be done. And patients without vision loss, you know, will, will, with a very clear fundus view may not require cataract surgery at all. And when we look at the patients with moderate cataract, there should be an attempt to treat any severe NPDR and PDR with laser PRP and any DME with focal or grid laser or anti vagal therapy before cataract surgery. So by moderate cataracts, we mean this kind of cataracts where fundus view is available, but detail is not seen, but we can obtain a fairly good uh, view uh, from the OCT. And these are the patients which need, who needs to be treated for the diabetic macular edema and the diabetic retinopathy prior to cataract surgery. But for very severe to advanced cataract, like this kind of cataract, with poor fundus view, if diabetic retinopathy status cannot be assessed adequately, we need to consider cataract surgery early, followed by assessment and treatment as is necessary. So uh, now, basically, the gist is, if diabetic macular edema is present, consider anti vagal therapy or steroid therapy before surgery, at the time of surgery, or either it can be done before, or at the time of surgery, or after surgery, if DMA is discovered when the medium is cleared, like the last kind of advanced cataracts we have seen, shown. Now let us look at the progression of diabetic macular edema after cataract surgery. You know, if we look at the natural history of macular edema after cataract surgery in diabetics, we will find that clinically significant macular edema arising after surgery commonly resolves, particularly if retinopathy is mild. Now, poor visual outcomes after cataract surgery are very strongly associated with the duration of diabetes and the preoperative status of diabetic retinopathy and vision loss is mostly due to diabetic macular edema. Now, cataract, we all know cataract surgery worsens macular edema and hastens the progression of diabetic retinopathy. The same has been shown in the ETDRS reports as well. Now it is cru crucial to know the risks of worsening of diabetic macular edema with cataract surgery. And if we look at the protocol Q of DRCR network, we'll find that patients with non-center involving DME, DME which doesn't involve the center, had a chance of 10% of developing center involved DME after cataract surgery. And those patients who had existing center involved diabetic macular edema had a 12% chance of worsening of DME. And the history of treatment of DME puts the patient at the greatest risk of worsening of DME at the time of cataract surgery. And the risk is about 20%. You know, 20% of those patients who has a prior history of treatment of DME will show worsening of DME after cataract surgery. Now, this is again a very interesting uh, publication from UK Diabetic Retinopathy EMR user group. And they have shown the risk of macular edema associated with preoperative rates of diabetic retinopathy. And the risk of DME in the first year postoperatively 
was about 1% even when there was no diabetic retinopathy preoperatively. So even in patients who did not have diabetic retinopathy preoperatively, they run a risk of about 1% of developing diabetic macroedema post cataract surgery after one year. So within one year postoperatively. And the worst risks are with severe impedia and they have a risk of about 13.1% of worsening of DME. Now, how do you manage DME after cataract surgery? We need to look into the perioperative and operative considerations in diabetes. And amongst the preoperative conditions, as we have discussed, the visibility permits. So we need to assess the level of diabetic retinopathy and presence of DME. And we need to treat DME and DR both before cataract surgery. And use of uh, non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs before surgery is uh, recommended very strongly because we know that blood retinal barrier is already disrupted in diabetic uh, retinopathy cases. And over and above, a uh, high amount of inflammation that occurs due to cataract surgery will even jeopardize that. It will affect further the uh, blood retinal barrier in these patients. So we need to, it is recommended that we use NSAIDs before surgery. Well, as for the perioperative and operative considerations, phacoemulsification is the method of choice. And these patients are prone to have small people, anterior capsular contraction and higher rates of PCR. So we need to be alert and uh, be more vigilant uh, for this kind of, uh, when we operate on these kind of patients. And as for the choice of intraocular lenses, a large optic hydrophobic acrylic eyewell is the eyewell of choice. And we do not recommend any multifocal or read off eyewells in these patients. Well, we know that phacoemulsification has been proved with the many publications that it is the best method for cataract surgery in these patients. And uh, postoperatively, we need to use steroids and NSAIDs for a longer duration. And dilated fundoscopy is recommended postoperatively one week, four to six weeks, and three to four months following cataract surgery to uh, you know, keep looking at the macula and the retina as such for DME or other DR changes. And as for the treatment, to uh, address postoperative DME, a combination of phacoemulsification with any other adjuvant treatment is recommended. It could be intravitreal antivagives, steroids, or laser photocoagulation, as the case demands. And there are many drugs available now. But you know, timing is everything when planning cataracts, uh, planning for cataract surgery in patients. In patients who have already been uh, receiving monthly antivagive injections for uh, DME treatment. We need to plan cataract surgery mid mid midway between two injections. And sometimes we need to differentiate between DME and pseudophake HCME. And fundus fluorescent angiogram would be uh, typically the gold standard for that, where we would find optic disc staining or hot, hot disc with typical petaloid pooling of the dye in uh, pseudophake HCME cases. Also now automated uh, algorithms are available with OCT to differentiate both. Now the effect of cataract surgery on, on DME in vitrectomized eyes, uh, it has been proven now that previous vitrectomy does not appear to lessen the rates of post cataract surgery macleodema. Well, to summarize, pre-existing DME prior to cataract surgery or history of previous treatment of DME may increase the chances of DME after cataract surgery. Assessment and treatment of DME prior to cataract surgery is a must. And treatment of DME with intravitreal antivagive steroids and lasers have shown promising results. Thank you.